One more video on the mature handling library in AnyLogic. In this case, uh, we're looking at an example where I have a conveyor line with um, workstations on it, and those workstations are connected to a resource pool. Um, what I'm trying to simulate here is that assembly workers are required at the respective workstations, and then we are having mobile uh, resource, mobile assembly workers that can move from uh, workstation to workstation. Um, and I will initially assign one assembly worker to the uh, production uh, simulated here, and then I will make another simulation run with two assembly workers. We already saw most of the components here in previous videos where I introduced the material handling library um, using conveyor lines uh, in AnyLogic. Um, so we have here sparse space markup for the actual uh, conveyor line. Here are the kinematic settings. You can see I chose a roller conveyor. I can specify here the resource type being able uh, to, to move along uh, this conveyor. In this case, I just chose agent to have like the the super class for all agents um, along respective agent types to be conveyed along um, this space markup. I have sp space markups for the stations. Uh, these stations have uh, defined processing times and defined capacities. I chose here that uh, the processing time starts when the capacity has been reached, meaning I'm simulating batch processes here. Uh, and the batch size is three. Each um, Workstation is connected to the resource pool down here, and the resource pool um, uses a resource unit, which is an agent type already specified in one of my previous videos called assembler. So this is an agent type representing an assembly worker, and uh, currently that resource pool has a capacity of one. You can then also see <clears throat> in these workstations, I specified that the number of required uh, resources is one, so we need one assembly worker at the workstation to execute the process. And I also connected um, the um, the process to these nodes that I've been drawn here, called node, node one, node two, by checking the sent seized resources box. And uh, we can see what it says. Uh, Uh, basically, what this means is that uh, when, when this is checked, that the resource has to be sent there in order for the process to be executed. And the location where the resource needs to be sent can be specified here. Uh, in this case, I choose a network node, and then I, in the model, select the respective node. So uh, for this station, it would be this node. Uh, for this station, it's this node. For this station, it's this node. And besides from that, this resource pool is connected to this rectangular square as a home location for the uh, assembly workers, uh, containing two attractors where assembly workers can have their uh, base position. Um, and with paths, this uh, home location is connected with the respective uh, nodes connected to the workstations. Down here, I have um, uh, process components, or so components from the process library, the source and the sink, the source generates material item types of, of type custom boxes, a specific a customized material item type I created one in one of my previous videos. And uh, <clears throat> every 10 seconds, we're creating a custom box. So this is the interval, is 10 seconds. Every 10, 10 seconds, we're creating a box and uh, placing it um, onto the conveyor by, by using this convey block that generates a convey, conveyance movement from the beginning of this conveyor to the end of this conveyor and implicitly considers the workstations with their defined processing times and uh, batch, batch sizes. And then we have the sink that receives the material items and, and destroys them. So let's run this model. So I have the uh, model running here. I'm going to increase the speed a little bit. And slow down the speed again. So you can see in batch process three, the worker moves along the defined path network 
to the respective occasions only when the work has arrived the processing time is started and we quickly see that that uh, seems to be a bottleneck here the system um, um, will start uh, piling up material here so we have a long and, and growing queue here uh, meaning an increasing backlog and uh, we can also see that resource utilization is approaching uh, 100% um, so let's try to close this model uh, I'm going back to my resource pool and I'm now going to increase the capacity in the resource pool uh, to two so what I'm modeling now is a scenario where I have two assembly workers and let's see if this helps Again, I'm going to increase the speed a little bit of the simulation. And I'm going to slow it down again. Okay, now we have two assembly workers moving in this uh, network. And let's see if they can uh, keep up. You can see utilization is increasing. So far, there's no queue yet, and uh, well, okay. Maybe we got an error, and this is because of my license. I can only simulate uh, for a limited number of time. Um, but clearly it helped uh, um, <coughs> removing the, the queuing here on the conveyor line, <coughs> adding this additional uh, assembly worker. And these would be the type of questions you could also um, model um, using a resource pool and using paths and nodes, um, connecting a, a resource pool and its home location to different and, and, uh, and changing um, workstation locations. And uh, we will look a little bit more on the material ending uh, library in upcoming videos.